Okay, this is an interlaminar case um, for the patient, uh, 56 years old, uh, suffering from leg pain on the right side. And when we look at the preoperative images, we see uh, first a, a slightly cordially migrated fragment uh, at L3-4. The patient was already preoperated uh, 20 years ago in open technique at 4-5 on the right side. So we decided for an uh, interlaminar operation L3-4. What is important when we look at the uh, uh, MRI is to see where is the uh, fragment located. It's located medial lateral, slightly to the caudal aspect. That's the reason why we uh, choose the interlaminar approach. Um, but when we look at the X-rays, we see that the interlaminar window is quite uh, small, so we have to resect bone to uh, get access to the interlaminar window. So this is also a good case to show you the principles to uh, do bone resection. So the first thing what we are uh, doing is uh, we have the patient placed in prone position and um, we have a flexion of the hip uh, that makes the um, interlaminar window a little bit um, larger um, because we get the uh, lumbar spine out of the low doses. And when we look at the uh, positioning of the patient, um, we see that the interlaminar window, am uh, rechts links tauschen bitte, interlaminar window is now is now uh, bigger than we expected um, in the, um, the preoperative imaging. So that's the cranial end of the interlaminar window. That's the cordal end of the interlam interlaminar window. So our approach is just in the middle of the interlaminar window, near the midline, not directly in the midline, because we don't want to cut into the interspinous ligaments. So we just mark um, the middle of the interlaminar window, and that is our entry point for the skin incision. When we do the skin incision, it is also always useful to cut into the fascia too. So I palpate the uh, spinous process and then I do the skin incision and do the incision of the fascia too. Then I introduce the dilator. And when I introduce the dilator, I feel here the resistance. Check it in the uh, in the AP uh, CM position, and then we change into the lateral position of the CM. Einmal seitlich bitte den C-Bogen. Ah, ganz bodenwert. Tisch noch ein bisschen deckenwert, bitte. Danke. So, direction of the dilator is towards the this space. Einmal nochmal bitte den uh, C-Bogen ein bisschen, uh, den Tisch ein bisschen, oh, obwohl es okay. Um, so, when we introduce the beveled operation, can we introduce it with the opening to the medial aspect uh, as we uh, expect the flavum ligament, handle to the medial aspect, so I can uh, put my little finger on that and uh, handle the endoscope. Um, easy. So uh, we just put the um, bevel operation with the opening to the media aspect, remove the dilator, and the approach is done. So afterwards, we uh, introduce the endoscope. So we have a foot um, pedal for the radio frequency and one for the uh, for the drill. Okay, first thing what we have to do is to prepare uh, the structures in front of us. Uh, then I will give you an, uh, in a second an orientation. So to the medial aspect, we expect uh, flavum ligament. Um, but here uh, we have to uh, prepare the bony structures additionally. So we use the radio frequency tool 
as our second instrument, uh, like an index finger inside the patient, and to coagulate and to palpate. So the structures in front of us uh, is the flavum ligament. We are operating the right side, that means the left side is caudal, right side is cranial, here is medial, and here is lateral. So we are looking to the medial aspect, to the f um, flavum ligament of the interlaminar window, and um, you saw already, interlaminar window is small. I feel already here bone from the descending facet. So we prepare um, more here uh, to the bony structures. To find the clear bony structures of the descending and ascending facet. Elektrisch. So this is already the um, joint here. That means ascending facet, descending facet. I will just prepare this a little bit better that we can see the structures clearly. Rangeur nochmal. Elektrisch nochmal. Dann einmal die Schere gleich. So I remove a little bit of the uh, capsular here of the joint uh, that we can clearly see um, the bony structures. So here we see the bone of the descending facet, that's the caudal end of the descending facet. That is our area where we start with our bone resection. So again, I give you an orientation. This is an important anatomical landmark now. Um, elektrisch. That means this is the caudal end of the descending facet. Uh, this is the ascending facet. To the medial aspect, we find the beginning of the flavum ligament. And this is the beginning of the uh, caudal lamina. And now we start with bone resection at the medial portion of the, uh, of the descending facet, following the medial portion of the ascending facet until we find um, the tip of the ascending facet. Bone resection is always necessary um, uh, according to the um, preoperative planning. In this case, we have to resect bone that we can reach the complete uh, disc space. So you always have to check um, while you uh, start bone, your bone work that you resect enough. The flavum ligament uh, stays intact as long as possible as a kind of protection layer in front of your instruments. So we start with bone resection at the medial portion of the ascending facet. Dann einmal bitte Rangeur.
The whole system works like a joystick, so I do not only move the drill, but I move the whole system. So now we check um, how much bone we have to resect. Am I röntgen bild, bitte? Just a little bit more to the cranial aspect, and then we have enough access to the this space here. Einmal die Stanze, bitte. So now we can resect the bone here with a punch. Rangeur, einmal bitte. Dann noch einmal elektrisch. So again, an orientation for the anatomical conditions. Uh, this is flavum ligament. Um, it's the deep layer here, medium margin of the ascending um, facet, which will be thinned uh, afterwards. That's the resected media portion of the descending facet and cranial lamina. Um, here's the tip of the um, ascending facet. So now we start to resect the media portion of the ascending facet, and uh, here the junction to the cord lamina. We thin the bone, so we don't open it uh, directly, and afterwards we open the flavum ligament and resect the thin part of the bone. Um, yeah, ich fange damit mal an, dann können wir gleich einmal den Kugelfräser einspannen. Beim Moment geht das noch ganz gut. So we have different tools to resect bone. You can use the protected uh, drill, as you see. Ja, einmal den Kugelfräser einspüren und mir den Rangeur geben. So now we use a different uh, drill, a round drill, to resect and thin the bone. So now we check uh, how far we have to go to the cordal aspect. Make an X-ray again, please. Okay, that should be enough. You see here's a changing of colors in the bone. That means always that's the last tissue layer of uh, the bone, so you have to be careful to resect more than that. Okay, then bitte einmal den Rangeur. So I just clean it a little bit better. Yeah, einmal elektrisch bitte. 
So again, orientation. Flavum ligament here, which is still intact. That's the uh, deep layer of the flavum uh, ligament, which inserts below the um, media portion of the ascending facet. That's the thin bone here from the tip of the ascending facet until uh, the cord lamina, which will be later resected with a punch. So now we can make it a little bit more easier to resect first the superficial layer um, of the uh, flavum ligament with a punch. I mean, um, die Stanze bitte. Dann einmal den Rangeur. So now we prepare the flavum ligament to the medial aspect, like we do in a normal disc herniation where we don't have to do any bone resection. So everything what we did until now was preparation of the interlaminar window. Now we start to open the flavum ligament as medial as possible, resect it to the lateral aspect, resect the thin bone, and then we um, get access to the spinal canal and the uh, herniation. So we start medially to resect the flavum ligament. Die Schere, bitte. So always slight rotation, then push the cannula and um, Pull the flavum ligament tight, that makes it much more easier to cut the flavum ligament. See now the color is changing of the flavum ligament, elektrisch bitte. That's always uh, the sign for the last tissue layer. Here the color is uh, more gray, so we have to be careful. It's the last tissue layer. Um, so when we go on um, to work with a punch, the flavum ligament will be open. Dann einmal die Schere, bitte. So now the flavum ligament is open. We now preparate to the lateral aspect and to the caudal and cranial aspect. Always use the beveled operation killer to uh, stretch the flavum ligament to the lateral aspect and to the caudal aspect. That makes it much more easier to cut the flavum ligament with instruments. So now we have to get, we al already see here epidural fat, we see a uh, newer structure, but now we have to get access to the lateral margin of the spinal canal to make sure that we can access the new structures laterally. So we m remove the fat tissue here around the dura. Ja, einmal die Stanze bitte. So now we have to resect uh, a little bit more to the lateral aspect. So what I first can do is to resect a little bit of bone here. Noch einmal den Rangeur. elektrisch. Dann 
Einmal die Schere, bitte. So here we see already fat tissue. That's always the sign that we reach the lateral margin of the new structure. And here we see already herniated material, but we will resect uh, a little bit uh, more, of course, to the caudal aspect and to the lateral aspect that we have clear, a clear situation. Dann bitte die Stanze. Mal sauber machen, bitte. So now we are here at the junction to the caudal lamina. So you see, we can resect um, the thin bone, insertion of the flavum ligament at the caudal lamina is short. Now you see, we are already overgone this situation. So now we remove uh, the rest of the flavum ligament. Make sure that you don't grab into the neural structures. Elektrisch bitte einmal. So lateral margin here of the neural structure, beginning of the um, of the L4 nerve root, herniation, dural sac. So now we resect a little bit more here to the lateral aspect to follow the neural structure. Einmal die Stanze nochmal. Dokumentationsbild bitte und den Rangeur nochmal. So now we have a clear anatomical situation. That means um, again that's cranial lamina a resected medial portion of the descending facet, a thin por a medial portion of the ascending facet, and resected medial portion, thinned uh, uh, bone to the cord lamina. If necessary, we could enlarge the defect in the bone uh, later on. Medium, uh, the lateral margin of the neural structure, beginning of uh, the L4 nerve root, and uh, here we have the herniation. So next step is uh, the resection of the herniation. And in a, such a case where we already see uh, the herniated material, um, first we resect material and um, afterwards we will um, go in with a cannula into the um, spinal canal. Yeah, that's the caudal end here. I'm electric, bitte. You see the structures are starting to move, that's always a good sign uh, for the, uh, your decompression. Kann ich ja mal ein Röntgenbild haben? Ja. Okay, einmal den Rangeur. So now we would go in with the cannula to the ground of the spinal canal. Therefore, it is uh, helpful to coagulate the 
vessels in the lateral recess because when it starts to bleed, it normally starts bleeding here. So now we have enough space to go directly with the cannula inside. Make sure when you rotate the cannula now that you are not squeezing the structures. Try in which direction it is easily possible. So, einmal elektrisch bitte. So when we make an X-ray, I'm on Röntgen, bitte. bitte. Uh, we are here at the cranial end of the disc space, and here we are at the cordal end. We have a quite small defect here um, in the um, in the annulus, so we have to take care for that. Yeah, it's a quite small defect, so at the caudal end of the disc space. I even cannot go in with a rongeur. Electric shimmer. So in such a case, I wouldn't open... I'm going to run a Röntgen build. We see that we are here at the uh, vertebral body of uh, L4. So the defect is somewhere here. Um, but we are have a really small defect, so I, um, I'm not going to open um, the annulus um, more than that. So I do a poor, pure sequestrectomy here in this case. For the patient, uh, I think this is the best. Um, yeah, elektrisch einmal. So now we check again uh, the decompressed new structures. You see the free, uh, free floating of the structures. That's always the uh, precondition that you should have. So we just medialize the new structures, go in with the, uh, with the endoscope, and uh, we can look below the new structures. No more further fragments. The other possibility what you can do is to go in with a cannula to rotate the cannula, opening to the cordal aspect, rotation of the endoscope to the cordal aspect, elektrisch noch einmal. Um, wenn wir noch einmal ein Röntgenbild haben können, bitte. Yeah, when you see where we are in the X-ray, uh, the decompression is good. We don't see any more free fragments. Einmal den Rangeur, bitte. So I think this was a good case to show the normal, the combination of normal interlaminar work uh, in a case of a, a small internal interlaminar window. That means we had to, noch einmal, we had to do bone work because the interlaminar window was too small. Um, we don't, we didn't have to do too much bone work like we do in uh, spinal stenosis. But the principles to do bone work. Um, for such a case are the same like in a recess stenosis. Okay, um, we see I'm a documentationsbild, decompression is uh, done, free floating of the neural structures, so we can remove everything.